Well, my neighbors thought this was grape arbors because from the road, it doesn't look like it's this high. And several of them would stop by and say, when are those grapes gonna be ready? And then a couple of them thought that they were okras because they saw the flowers and they thought, what, this guy is growing giant okras or something. So it did, it did cause a lot of stir among the neighbors. They really noticed for sure. Actually, what it is, is a loofah. It's a loofah gourd. It's in the cucumber family. Each one of these flowers is the male flower and they come off every day. All these flowers come off. The females have their own special flower and it turns into the loofah. And the loofah just grows. It hangs on the vine for several months and then we take the skin off and the sponge is inside. My name's Rob Ersprung. I grow loofahs in Sevier County. It's just our small farm, but we have lots of big loofahs. You know, normally people think a loofah is just in the shower for exfoliating your skin, but they're also very porous, which makes them great for scrubbing anything. I scrub my tractor with them. Pure mud, rinse it in a bucket, and it rinses clean. You know, normally people use them around the sink. You can clean your pots and pans with them or scrub potatoes and carrots or your, you know, your sink itself, your stove top. Anything that you would use like a light Brillo pad on would be perfect for that. And they don't scratch, so you don't have to worry. Uh, when we're at the farmer's market, so many people come to me and say, what is this? I thought it was a sponge from the ocean. And I tell them, did you know loofahs grew on a vine like a cucumber? And they're all like amazed. Sometimes it's hard for them to believe. Sometimes they finally say, I finally get it once they see the whole loofah. But most people don't realize that they're from a, a gourd or grow on a vine. They think that they're from the ocean. Until a few years ago, I had no idea myself. I just had gotten this farm and was looking to grow different things and, and try different things and I came across this and tried it and, it and it was a success. I was born in New York City in the Bronx. I lived there until grade school where we moved out of the city. My dad worked on the New York Stock Exchange and I followed in his footsteps but only lasted about two years and when I got married I hit the road and I traveled around the country 47,000 miles and stopped in Sevierville on September 14, 1977. That was my 24th birthday, just by coincidence. And then we raised a family here and I have children and grandchildren. There's so many beautiful, nice people around here. It's just a perfect place to raise a family and it's been nothing but good to me my whole life. I've always gardened. Some years I've claimed uh, we've grown the best corn human beings can grow because I concentrated on that a lot but I've always wanted to try different things and now this stage of my life I'm just got this place and having a blast so I don't know if I would say exotic but I just thought this this farm that I just got was so beautiful and the land was so perfect you could grow anything and that was sort of my idea is like what could you grow if you could grow anything and I came up with a few things, and this was one of them, the one that stuck. One thing being in Tennessee, especially right here, it was so flat and so sunny here. They need sun all the time. We're right in a bottomland, pretty much surrounded by a creek, and they need lots of water, as you can imagine. So being in a creek and this sunny location, it really just worked out perfect. Growing season to get a sponge is very long. We start them in March in a greenhouse. We take these plants out about the middle of May once it's good and warm. They're still small then. Then as they grow up, we train them to the fence and it's not for a couple of months before they start getting any loofahs at all. And they really don't start getting good loofahs until August and early September. Some of these won't even make it because if it's an early frost or something, they'll be ruined. So we're good. this year we're going to throw um, plastic over the top to try to protect as many as we can to get a longer harvest. 
to harvest one, they hang here about two months, fully grown. And as they dry out and go to seed, the inside is just the whole loofah and just peel off the skin. And you'll see, we take the seeds out, rinse them in rainwater, and then put them in the sun to dry. And that's the whole process. They practically last forever. They don't pull apart and they just get softer with time. So they're really a beautiful part of nature. Whenever I tell people that they're practically indestructible and you can't pick them apart, they're always like, Mother Nature always does it better. And it really seems to be the case because they just get softer in time. People ask me, how long do they last? And I just tell them probably, if you take care of it, just as long as you want it to. We use them for this, we use them for that. Next thing we use them for something nasty and we're just done with it after several months and throw it away and get a new one. But if you wanted to, you could, you could keep them for years. When I first started growing the loofahs and what I was interested in learning about here was about farming. And I bought a cool old tractor I wanted to grow things green and sustainable. I thought with this bottom land, I was just researching anything that could be grown, I figured it could be grown here in pure sun and this beautiful bottom. And that's why I thought I'd try it because actually they say they're hard to grow and they're not a good cash crop. But being retired, I'm more or less having fun and that's a bonus.